Yeah. Folks, folks in the audience, if you could please take your seats and uh, and quiet down. Folks, if you could please take your seats and quiet down. Thank you. Thank you for quieting down and taking your seats. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I had an opportunity to look at uh, the um, uh, alternative uh, draft, and I think you had some comments that you wanted to, to mention. You were the last speaker that wanted to. Um, my comment is looking for a way to express this board's concern with the financing. I think that is a very valid concern. I share it with you. Um, I lean towards not going out for bond indebtedness. Prop 1A is about approving a bond. It's not necessarily whether we invest in railroads or highways. It's about approving a bond. And I think there are people on this board, um, in fact, a fair share of us, who believe our state is borrowing too much money and getting us in financial trouble. I, for one, believe our federal government's borrowing too much money, or, excuse me, overspending and printing money, however you want to look at it, and that that's going to get us in a lot of trouble. But at the same time, we're spending almost $100 billion as a state and a country on transportation. So I was looking for a middle ground, because I think for this board to move forward, with just a flat statement of non-support for any forward movement on multimodal transportation in regards to rail would be a huge mistake. So I would certainly support a statement of financial concern. I, it's very valid. Um, but I think to say we're just going to continue to build more and more and more highways, how many neighbors have like five cars out front of their house? What happens when they have 10 cars out front of their house? Um, can we continue to go there? I just don't think we can. So, again, I'm looking for a middle ground. Um, I'm concerned about borrowing money. Uh, that being said, I just think it would be a real mistake to just say, no, stop it now. Okay. Member Larson? Well, when we talk about money, I would like to refer back to the Central Valley Project that was started in 1960 when <laughs> President Kennedy pushed the plunger to start the San Luis Reservoir, and we built the San Luis Project. And I remember they were promised a project there to deliver water. Oh, your mic. Your mic. Your mic. Promised uh, there a project to deliver water, which they did. And they were promised a drain canal that would take that drain water back into the bay. Well, they stopped the drain water at uh, Kesterson, which created an environmental problem. Let's not talk environmental because that's a whole other subject. But anyway, it created a problem. Mm -hmm. And then they said, well, it's a problem, so now you've got to plug the drains that we put into the drain canal. So they spent millions of dollars, millions of dollars, and now the drain canal sits there 75 miles long with reeds growing out of the bottom of it in cement. And that's what concerns me about the federal government. They make promises, and sometimes they don't keep them. And this is a prime example of what they didn't keep. So uh, I'm a little bit concerned about saying you're going to get more money are we going to get more money? That's my concern. All right. Thank you. I didn't think I was actually going to even speak today. Um, I have spoken on this topic you know, ad nauseum um, between 2010 and 2014. I mean, I didn't know there was anything left to say. I'm, in my mind, I'm looking at this as a ballot integrity issue. And I think if you are willing to entertain that as the focal point is, have we honored the wishes of the 2008 Prop 1A vote? I don't know how anybody could agree that those representations have been adhered to. If you look at the, the, doll, the sheer dollar amount, if you look at the cost of, uh, of taking the, the train from point A to point B, the timeline, the list goes on and on. There are representations in 2008 that I think were terribly compelling for the voters to approve this. Mind you, it was a fairly close vote. I think it was, was it 52-48, Debbie? I don't, don't, I don't recall. But 
when I vote on something, just like you, I want to see that the wording is honest. And it's actually, I presume it to be honest and justifiable. This is not the case, which is one of the reasons why I had proposed that we submit a letter to, uh, to the courts uh, in the form of an amicus with the one question. Just one, one, one question. Because I think it encompasses everything that we're talking about um, today and over the last uh, four or five years. Whether the projected cost, funding sources, and implementation measures of the high-speed rail project exceed the authority granted by the voters in Prop 1A. I believe the answer is in the affirmative. It has been exceeded in every conceivable way. And if that is an answer in the affirmative, that's consequential. That means that if they've overstepped themselves, how do we right this ship? I have, as a, in my former capacity as a council member, I have submitted my concerns to the authority. I put it in writing. I've made uh, voicemails. I've made emails. And throughout that entire exchange, I have gotten the fat bupkis. I have gotten very little information uh, on this issue, and it came to a head with the submission of a formal letter and a press conference in 2011-2012. So expressing our concerns is so 2010. Where does that leave us today? I have, as others here, have the utmost respect for the representatives that have spoken, especially Tom Richards. He is a pillar in this community, and when he says something, I pay close attention because he's a man of integrity with serious gravity. He is an advocate today, as, as he has been for, for some time. We just happen to have different interpretations of the reality of this project and its ultimate viability. So if this were 2012, 2010, I would go along with an expression of concern. But I've already done that. I've done it multiple times. An expression of concern is, 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 is not viable, just as uh, the, the implementation of uh, this project, in my, in my opinion. I respect my colleagues, especially Member Perea, for passionately supporting this project. Even though we disagree on, on a lot. Uh, he believes in this project, and I, and I, have, to, I have to respect uh, his, his conviction and sticking to those convictions. Um, I do, however, believe that if anything is above our pay grade, it's the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. <coughs> That's above any seeming connection to Fresno County. But this is the boots on the ground reality in Fresno County. This is not above our pay grade. In fact, I'm encouraging my colleagues to not only uh, support the resolution, even if we were to tweak it uh, ever so slightly, but I would also ask my colleagues in the next matter that we send a message to the courts where this issue will be decided. Politically, this thing is done in my book. There's, they're, they're, they're constructing, um, uh, or they're, they're, they're taking, um, uh, they're taking uh, uh, buildings away. They're preparing for the rail system. Politically, I think this is already running its course. So how do you vindicate and look after the interests of your, com of your constituency and your community where it matters? And the only place that I believe it matters right now is with the courts. And we can't get there without this resolution. So um, I will be supportive of the resolution in its current form, not without great reservation and even some, some, some heartburn. Uh, but I think it's the only thing left for us to do to send that clear message. I would ask that uh, there be some consideration by the maker of the motion. Excuse me. We will have a, a motion discussion. But before that motion discussion happens, I would ask that the third recital from the bottom, take the word boondoggle off and replace it with project, uh, only because uh, I think it's, it deserves uh, a higher level of um, 
consideration. And the addition of a new uh, resolution at the, at the end. So, and it be thereabouts, be it further resolved, this board requests the state legislature to put this matter before the votes, before the voters for a revote in a special election. Because the courts will decide this in the fall, but if they decide that 2008 Prop 1A has been exceeded, the next question is, what do you do about it? And I believe a revote would be the most appropriate thing to do. Uh, so I ask the the maker uh, of the or the drafter of the resolution to consider those two changes. Um, any other member of the board wishing to comment? Mr. Chairman, um, I also would like to ask County Council: uh, Is it appropriate? I had it in the original draft, and then I I removed it, but I think it belongs in that. Um, we should rescind and revoke previous resolutions. Is that appropriate? It, it is appropriate for the board to amend the resolution that it's considering, as and it, certainly if that is the pleasure of the board uh, to revoke that prior resolution, that would make things more consistent. Are you okay with that? I'm so to, to rescind and revoke the previous resolution. Oh, yeah, that's... That's... Uh, that's, um, um, that's uh, that's fine. So it would read that the board, Fresno County Board of Supervisors rescinds and revokes pre previous resolutions and hereby opposes, is where I would put that. And I'm fine with your two changes as well, if that's where we're headed. Okay. Any other mem member, Lord, or prayer? We took a break. Uh, you and Supervisor Pachigian went out the back. Did you exchange votes on your two resolutions on this matter? Oh. <laughs> member Perea. You are really out of out of order. Simple yes or no. You are out of order. Simple yes or no. No. Unbelievable. You know, it's Thank one you. thing to talk about the merits of a project. In the answer to your question, the answer is not only no, it's hell no. Yeah, I think you answered and the I'm question. And I'm absolutely shocked that you would even suggest that. That's a low blow. Wow. Wow. Well. Okay. With that being said, do we have uh, we have some competing motions? Um, member um, Case McNary uh, and Member Perea. Uh, you had uh, a motion. Do you still wish to continue with that? You know, this issue was placed on the on the agenda by Supervisor Pachigian, and I think it's a courtesy to my colleague. Um, it's very apparent where the board is going. I don't agree with it, and that's okay. I only ask that the resolution reflect that there was at least one negative vote in, in that regard, because I think it's a mistake uh, going forward for some of the work that's been done. Uh, well, I agree with the financial issues, so I would defer to my colleague, Supervisor Pacini, because I think that's an appropriate courtesy for a colleague. I appreciate that. Thank you. I would make the motion with those changes. I would make a motion that we uh, move forward and uh, accept the draft, well, the resolution with those few changes and uh, take an official position of this board as opposing the California High Speed Rail, Rail Project and the rest of it, I'm just going to read it, and urges that our federal, state, and local officials focus their attention on higher priorities such as water supply, existing transportation systems, public safety, and education for the benefit of Central California and the State of California as a whole. And be it for the resolved, that's where you're be it for the resolved for the revote. Okay. That's and I my motion. I would request that the res resolution clearly reflects the vote. Fair enough. We have a motion by Member Puchigan. Uh, I will second that, unless anybody else is screaming <laughs> to do so. Um, we will. There's a request for a uh, roll call vote, Madam Clerk. And we're voting on Puchigan's motion, right? Yep. Go turn your mic on. Supervisor Pachigan? Yes. Chairman Borges? Yes. Supervisor Case McNary? No. Supervisor Larson? Yes. Supervisor Perea? No. 3 2, motion carries. We now move to item. We now move to item addendum B under Chairman Borges. seems like it would be appropriate to immediately just start with uh, uh, some of the cards that uh, have been submitted uh, and go directly for, to public comment. Uh, folks in the audience, uh, we are moving on to the item still involving high-speed rail, but this is involving the amicus brief uh, proposal. 
Uh, I have a card from Sherilyn Smith, a Ross Browning, a Linda Doubles, and anybody else who wishes to comment on this item, this would be the opportunity to please fill out a card and uh, hand it over to the clerk to the board. Mr. Chairman, Linda Doubles had to leave, and so she had wrote, she hand wrote a note for the board, and I will be distributing that. Okay. So Linda Doubles not appearing. And is there a Sherilyn Smith? Not only of this county, but of the entire state. And in considering this amicus brief, please keep that in mind. It, you're tying now the next step closer to the Prop 1A proposition, closer to what we all voted for in this county and throughout the state. <clears throat> I want to talk about what that means in terms of what it is and what it isn't. It is holding HSRA accountable for its actions from the time that Prop 1A became law until the moment right now where we're having this meeting. It is not anything to do with future projections, future benefits, future goals, future outcomes. It is have they completed to date what their duties, entrusted duties were as prescribed in Prop 1A. And that's what we're looking at specifically. I think looking at future projections is just fine but it should not enter into your decision whether to do the amicus or not. We're here at this present moment in time looking back on what's taken place and asking HSRA if in fact they've upheld the public trust that was given over to them when that became a law. Therefore, I support what was said last meeting, both Mrs. Supervisor Pachigian and Supervisor Perea, whose district I happen to be in, and I happen to also be in a very strong progressive thinker. Um, both of them said that much of the testimony that came up here, however sincere, however factual, was not relevant to the proceedings. I fully agree with what they said. And by the same token, I fully agree, I, I want to point out rather, that future projections at this point in time, such as a maintenance facility, Mr. Perea, are also not relevant to the proceedings. I, want to, I would hope that we can keep that focus as we move forward and realize that however many promises are out there, the voters have already considered them. They've already considered the benefits and they said, yes, we'd like that to happen, but under very, de um, very defined conditions. In fact, it may, be, it may have passed because the, the voters themselves realized that they were under the protection of Prop 1A for minimal risks. And after all, when you take a cost-benefit analysis or a risk-benefit analysis, it has to be that the person taking on the risk has a say in whether they do that or not. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And also, uh, let's not be derailed by a cost-benefit analysis is what I'm trying to say. I want to point out that just before, uh, it was about um, a few months before the uh, November decision came down that they were out of compliance, both that HSRA was out of compliance, both with their HSRA and their financial plan. The San Francisco Chronicle came out with, yes, we need to solve this in the courts. We're getting nothing but empty promises evasions and obfuscations. I had to look that one up. It means clouding the issue. Do not cloud the issue today. Stay focused, please. I want to point out to you that the last meeting, Jeff Morales was asked, and very often he gave the same answer for other things, but this one I couldn't accept. How much have we spent to date? The CEO of HSRA said, I don't know, I can get that for you. I hope what he got for you is on the record. Because for the CEO not to know, even within, he could have said approximately, I would have felt fine with that, and I'll get the exact figure to you. But no, he cannot evade that kind of a question ever again. And by passing this amicus brief, 
by this proposal today, you will be putting teeth into it, both for the citizens of this state, the citizens of this county, and we can have a say in this entire process. I absolutely think it's fundamental to our democracy. I applaud you for putting this forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is Ross Browning, followed by Ben Burkwam. And those are the last two cards that I have. If uh, you wish to speak, fill out a card, please, and hand it to the clerk. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Ross Browning from the County of Kings. And the reason that the County of Kings, no one is here from their board, is they are having a board meeting at this very moment. <laughs> so I uh, wanted to clear that up, Mr. Perea. That's true. Uh, two weeks ago, I'm not sure who of you, but several, several people vo voiced the concern that what did the people vote for? Are, are they happy with what they got? What did they think they were getting, and wh where, where do they stand in that perception today? And I'd like to take this time, my time, to tell you a little story about my wife and I. We, we have some, some of our biggest arguments about who or what we're voting for during the election. We take the, we, we knock out some time, and then we sit and we go through item by item, person by person, the pluses and the minuses, and we generally agree on most things. One of the things we agreed on after a little bit of chatting was the high-speed rail. Now, what did we agree to? What, what was I promised? I was promised an 800-mile high-speed rail system for only $10 billion. It's a deal. Let's get it. The total cost was going to be $33 billion to be funded by the federal and by private investors. It's not a bad deal. It's still only $10, 10 billion out of my pocket, which, which amounts to over $640,000 million per year to cover the interest. It, it, it's not projected forward. What else was I promised? I was <coughs> promised Los Angeles to San Francisco in two hours and 40 minutes. Not maybe, not sometime. It was stayed in there. A speed of 220 miles an hour. Not maybe, not sometimes, not on the first or third Mondays of the month. Every time. No subsidy. And that one we really liked. No subsidy. The balance of the monies needed are coming from the feds and the private investors, and that the system would be electrified. What have I got today? All right. I have no... Oh, and it was going to be finished by 2022. Boy, they got a long, long way to go to finish it. What do I have today? I have on paper not an 800-mile system, but I have a six, excuse me, a 500-mile system, which cost $68 billion by their numbers. If you take their numbers and really look at them and analyze them, they're over. In fact, their original numbers, the high point was $117 billion. So a lot more than the 10 that I was talking about. Right now, there's no way that that train, and I don't care what they, what, what whoever they've got says, there's no way that that thing will make the route that they've got it on San Francisco to Los Angeles in two hours and 40 minutes. I'm sorry. Physics is physics. Uh, the speed, fine, that's okay. Well, let me, let me I'll, I'll summarize, sir, and say the, uh, the, the woman, the lady that gave the invocation, and a great job she did. She said, do it right, which resonated with me big time. We and uh, the organization I belong to in Hanford have always said, all we're asking for is that you do it right. Just do it right and stop lying to us. And we haven't got it done right yet. Thank and you. if I were to vote today, do I, do I want this system or not? I would or not. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is Ben Burkwam, followed by Mike Brady, and uh, I'm going to butcher the last name again, Albert uh, um, Perdon. Um, I want to remind individuals that uh, if you could please speak to the agenda item. This is not a, a general uh, discussion uh, on high-speed rail, but uh, it, it's sp more specific to the, uh, the proposal for an amicus brief. Good uh, afternoon, morning, 
Board of Supervisors, uh, thank you for having me. I, I, uh, I'm here representing Assemblyman uh, Jim Patterson and speaking on his behalf. Um, we uh, commend you for uh, supporting the Pachigian resolution and uh, we would, uh, I'm sorry I didn't get to make my comments in regards to that earlier. Um, in regards to the amicus brief, uh, going back to a comment that was said earlier about the, uh, the people having lost their hope and, um, and this is like, you know, something that can help spur that on. I think the reality is the people in this state and this nation have uh, primarily lost their hope because they don't trust government anymore. And they don't trust government because government isn't trustworthy in a lot of cases. They've wasted a lot of money. They've done projects that are either unfeasible or uh, not within the country's best interests or the state's best interests or the region's best interests. So to go back, the, the reason this amicus brief is so timely is the, the people of the state voted for something that is entirely different than what uh, currently exists. And that uh, Assemblyman Patterson <coughs> has asked the same thing and we would love to see uh, that taken to the uh, state legislature to uh, see that put back on the ballot. Um, we've already seen movement on the other side to support uh, such a resolution to have that. Um, and I think the, your action will only further that. The, that being said, uh, infrastructure, technology, um, and progress, are we are not opposed to that at all. We support that, but it needs to be fundamentally feasible and um, uh, weighed out against the, the costs and benefits. Uh, this is not one of those projects. If it were, uh, we would be supportive of it. There needs to be infrastructure development. The problem we see is we're talking about a, a pittance uh, um, the amount of dollars compared to the billions of, of dollars that we're losing to agriculture, as uh, Supervisor Larson has already said, if we could just build the water infrastructure and stop the radical environmentalism that's going on in this region, uh, we could save the, we could make far more money than what we're going to make on a hub for high-speed rail that is uh, not high-speed and may never get built. Uh, so we would just ask that the state reorganize its priorities, but we do support the uh, MX brief and we uh, applaud you for uh, your movement on that. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mike Brady. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, your amicus uh, brief proposal <coughs> is uh, very timely. Uh, the remaining parts of the Proposition 1A litigation called Toss Vacuta versus uh, California High Speed Rail Authority uh, will be going to trial probably in this fall not too long from now, so yours is, is most timely. Um, as an attorney, I will tell you that uh, most trial courts uh, look with uh, favor, particularly on amicus briefs submitted by public entities, such as a county or a city. Um, it's just because you're reflecting uh, the will of your people. And uh, so I think there's a, an excellent chance that your amicus brief uh, would be accepted uh, by um, uh, Judge Kenny, who currently has jurisdiction. Now, the most important thing is your amicus brief is also very focused, and properly so, on the exact three issues that are going to be going to trial when they go to trial. Uh, and you use the word in your amicus brief, implementation. We're focused on the implementation of the project. So the three issues that we're going to trial on are implementation uh, issues. For example, will the authority be able to transport a passenger from L.A. to San Francisco in two hours and 40 minutes? That's implementation. That was actually the most important promise made to the voters because like our little kids in the back seat, you're always asking, when are we going to get there? How long is it going to take? And that was certainly a very important promise, and that's implementation. So you are focused on that. The second implementation issue in this trial will be whether the operating costs are going to require a subsidy. That means as the train runs or is planned to run, is the state, the local, or the federal government going to have to subsidize its operating costs? So that is an implementation issue. And lastly, the third issue is also an implementation issue. Did the voters get what they were promised? And this is implementation because we know they were promised a genuine high-speed rail system with one set of tracks going south, 
and one set north exclusively for the use of high-speed trains, nobody else. Instead, after Proposition 1A was passed by the voters, um, the authority and the legislature changed the project so that part of the trip, the high-speed train, will not have dedicated tracks, and it has to share tracks with commuter, regular commuter, con non-electrified, <coughs> well, I shouldn't say that. It would have to share tracks with regular commuter rail. And that is a huge implementation issue because it makes it impossible, impossible for the uh, high-speed rail system to achieve the goals uh, that it is required, the headway goals, the trip time goals, and so forth. So I think your resolution is appropriate. Your amicus brief is timely, and it's well-focused, and I urge you to go forward with it. I think it will be well-received. Thank you. Thank you. Some questions uh, for Mr. I have a couple yes. questions. Should if you could hold, if you have a couple questions, wait till we finish Brady. public comment, okay. and uh, we'll bring you back. So just hold tight, sir. Um, you are our last speaker. Yes, Albert Perdon again. Uh, I think there needs to be a point of clarification in your communication. There are two projects here. When I read the Los Angeles Times, the <coughs> high-speed rail project is from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Uh. When I look at the ballot measure, the high-speed rail project is from Sacramento, the Bay Area, to the Inland Empire, to San Diego. So when you state your position regarding the high-speed rail project, be clear in what you're for or what you're against. If you say we're against the 800-mile high-speed rail project that the, a majority of the voters approved, then you're taking a position against what the majority of the voters approved. If you say, we're not pleased with the strategy, with the plan that the High-Speed Rail Authority has come up with for a, a project from San Francisco to Los Angeles because the financing isn't resolved, et cetera, et cetera, then say that that's what you're opposed. Thank you. All right, that closes public comment, and we're bringing it back to the board. I know we have some, some questions, but I'm going to start off with just a couple of uh, quick comments about the genesis of this. Um, in amicus brief, I hope folks aren't, you know, afraid of Latin. I mean, I, normally I am afraid of Latin, um, but uh, it generally means a friend of the court. It allows parties that are outside of litigation to weigh in, and they can weigh in in a number of fashions. It can be very detailed legal argumentation, um, and it can also be uh, commentary on the social impact or the community impact <clears throat> of any given matter. Um, so there's enormous flexibility in why, why a party would wish to submit an amicus brief. Under these particular circumstances, the, the proposal for this in this agenda item is that we submit in an amicus brief uh, on one particular issue. We're not going to get into the entire laundry list of, of uh, or legal minutia of the various pieces of litigation. Really, it's just one. And I read it earlier. It's whether the, the projected cost and the funding sources and the implementation measures of the high-speed rail project uh, for the larger state, <laughs> um, exceed the authority granted by the voters in Prop 1A. So this is a ballot integrity inquiry. And uh, as, we, as we combine that with the, uh, the political resolution that uh, we just passed, I think it's making a statement to the court to consider our concerns. It does not, let me be very clear on this, it does not make us a party to the litigation. It does not require us to, to, to pay money to file the brief. So we're in a very unique situation right here to be able to provide this insight in this commentary, well, principally because this is ground zero for, for the rail project. And um, I think we know that politically it is going to be an uphill battle um, for this project to, to go in a different direction. But the courts, the judiciary, is the last place where things can change. And I believe that this one litigation that's going on um, in Sacramento that we'll have a trial date for next, next month, and, uh, and uh, it will happen this fall, in the weeks leading up to litigate into the trial, that's when the court 
would accept um, this or consider this request. And let me finally add that an amicus is not a right. We don't have a right to tell the courts that you must accept and consider our concerns. No, no, it's a request. An amicus brief is an, essentially an application, and it must be consider it, it must be evaluated by the court whether they want to accept it. So um, the way that it's written right now is very. I think it's very clear. It is clean because we're not getting into all the legal argumentation, um, but it puts forward this, you know, state concerns of the cost and the, the sourcing of money and the, the implementation measures. Um, I will say that um, it, my understanding, and I've, I've been working, uh, I've been talking closely with county council and other uh, attorneys that are involved in this process um, beyond uh, Mr. Brady, of course, is that uh, uh, it's entirely appropriate for us to take a position on this uh, in open session. This is not, in my estimation, a closed session issue. I, so I, I imagine some folks will say that we should be doing it in closed session, um, but there are no costs to, to the county to file a brief. There's no legal liability because we have no relationship to litigation. All right? And we are not a direct party in the litigation. So without those three, I don't know how we get into closed session unless it is intentionally uh, uh, discussed uh, or issues are brought up that would force it in that direction. But as it's currently written, I believe that we're fully prepared to evaluate this proposal and in direct staff to, uh, to, to fine tune it in a way that uh, the county council believes is appropriate and brief. I don't, we're not asking for a, a five-page brief. We're not asking for a 20-page brief. We're asking for a few pages that articulate our concern and the issue that is most important to us and ask only that the court consider it. That being said, I'd like to member Larson or is it Pacheco? Just first? before the discussion starts, I would just um, say that uh, – you know, the board needs to be aware of the fact that if it has more detailed questions, I think those types of things would be appropriate for closed session opposed to open session. Uh, my office has enough direction from the matters that are placed uh, on the agenda in public to uh, draft a uh, brief setting forth what the pleasure of the board is, if that's what the board's direction is. My intention would be that we would uh, most likely return to the board in closed session with the draft of the brief prior to filing it. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you. I forgot to mention that. Yes, that. I'm sorry. Sorry, I got raisins. <laughs> Thanks, Bill, for the raisins. I eat plenty of them. <laughs> yeah, this this doesn't end the matter. Is giving direction to staff to prepare, and it must come back to us to evaluate, and then being perhaps in a closed session environment, make the final decision. But it's only to direct staff to to start the project. So therefore, we won't have a vote on this today. We would have a vote. But we won't submit it until after we get the draft back. We won't, it, we won't uh, submit anything until we get the draft back from county council, and we would have an opportunity to review it and comment further. Well, what's our vote for, then? To direct staff. That's it. Well, I did, I did have legal questions regarding this, but I think I'd like to hear this in public. I'd like to hear the motion, the second, and the vote. So proceed. <coughs> I did have a few questions for County Council and maybe Mr. Brady. So I just want to um, understand the process. First of all, um, Mr. Brady says we're not too late, we're not too early, we're just right, kind of like Goldilocks. Would you agree with that? There is adequate time to prepare a application uh, to receive permission from the trial court in Sacramento uh, Superior Court to submit an amicus brief. There is no trial date set in that matter, although I understand from looking at the pleadings uh, in the case that one will probably be set for some time in this fall. So the process, to talk about the process a minute, uh, we're asking permission of the court to submit our brief. That's correct. And do the we do that before it's actually created? Do you do that? You, you normally pre you prepare the whole brief, the application requesting permission to file the amicus brief is a, in the form of a motion or an application to the court asking the court for With an order saying you can file the brief that you've attached. Okay. Um, 
And to confirm, there's no cost to Fresno County to do this other than county council's time. Right? Right. right. There, we as a we don't pay entity, to file the brief. Correct. As a public entity, we don't have to, under the government code, pay filing fees. And filing or preparing the brief, there's no additional expectations of Fresno County? No, there might be a reply briefing that's requested by the court, those types of things. But... Um, you can always defer doing that or, or refrain from doing that if that's the board's pleasure. And if this board chooses to move forward with this, um, you have staff that um, is able to prepare. Within the confines of what the board has expressed so far, I'm confident we can express adequately express the board's position on this. <coughs> and within the confines, just to talk about that, God bless you, <laughs> uh, to talk about the confines just a second, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to make sure I understand. Uh, to me, the promises made in Prop 1A should be the promises kept. And this brief, as I read through it, focuses on <coughs> the promises made and how they have not been kept. Am I right about that? That's, That's the actual That's my understanding topic. of the agenda item, yes. Okay. Any other comment? Otherwise, um, well, I'll, I'll make a motion that we... Uh, that we approve this agenda item and give direction to staff to prepare a draft. Um, and this does not go out without it coming back to the board. That because I want my call, I, I want to do it, and I want my colleagues to have an opportunity to see the final proposed version. And if we need to make changes, we can do so. But that we're just giving direction to county council's office to to, to make a draft and then give it back to us for our review for ultimate vote and submission. Yeah, if that's approved by the board, I understand yeah. those instructions. Right. Is there a second for that? And I do think this goes along with what we just did. I, I think this is logical to move forward because the problem, I mean, the reason we opposed most of that resolution that a majority passed was that the promises made have not been the promises kept. And so I'm going to second your motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, do a roll call. Supervisor Chairman Borges? Yes. Supervisor Pachigan? Yes. Supervisor Case? No. Supervisor Larson? Yes. Supervisor Preya? No. 3 2, motion carries. We now move to item number oh, five. Oh. Um, is it the will of the board? Sorry. Um, thank you, board, and thank you, everybody who came out uh, to attend uh, the high-speed rail discussions. Uh, I know it took some time, um, and I think I owe you a Starbucks to someone because I think it went longer than I thought. <laughs> um, do, is it the will of the board that we jump into the?